OK, Brian, let's have a look now at some of the areas of the BTS device that testers sometimes struggle with. Yeah, well, the first thing to remember, so, is that most questions can be answered by having a quick look in the VTS device user guide. So the user guide is actually within the VTS device? Oh, yeah, yeah, just hit the F5 key. That'll take you across to the screen where you can access the guide. If I press the F5 key, then, am I going to lose the screen I'm on at the moment? Will I use no. the information there? No, not at all. You can just hit the F5 key and go back where you were. And what about the hard copy of the user guide? Yeah, you, you can refer to this. But the version on the VTS device is always up to date, whereas you can't rely on this one being up to date. So that's been constantly updated, yeah. the one within the VTS that device? that one's always up to date. So, what's next? Well, well let's uh, have a look at using the spare smart card, eh? What kind of occasion would I need a spare smart card? Well, there's a few occasions. Maybe you've just left it at home, um, or maybe you've uh, lost it, or it's become damaged and you're waiting for a replacement. Right, so what's the first step? Right, well, we'll need the spare smart card, mm -hmm. and then uh, I'll take you through it. I'll be the site manager, uh -huh. and you're the tester. Righto. So what I need is I go to other functions, uh -huh. I go to administration, nice and easy smart on the cards. menu, I go to smart cards. Look at my options, and one is issue a spare smart card. That's pretty straightforward. So I go there, and uh, what I need is your user ID, which uh, I think if I get it right is, is that. Days required, well, you haven't lost it. It's not damaged or just anything. You don't need a replacement. You've just left it home, so I'll leave that one day. If you did need a replacement, then I'd change that to five. Give time for that to turn up. Um, we'll change that to missing because it's not damaged. If you did need a replacement, I'd click there, but you don't. So I'll simply continue. And the machine will tell us what to do. OK. So what it wants is me to remove mine and, and you to quickly put that card in. Because it says I've got 20 seconds around. to do that. That's it. In that one goes. What it wants now is you to enter your password. password. And that's okay. personal to you, I can't do that. I'll look away. <laughs> and then we'll just select continue. And again, it's got F2 so on there. Continue or F2. You can click it or we can use F2. Now, it will dial out. And uh, remembering that it's me that's logged on. So it's going to need me to put my card back in. So you're still yeah. in control of the system, I'm still in and it's control your of the smart system. card that's issued. It now me wants me to one. take that one out quickly, put my one back in within 20 seconds, and it's now come up and told you that's issued. Great. So I can take my card out, and when the greeting screen comes up, if you want to log in, you can log in. And who would keep the spare smart card? The spare smart card should be kept secure, so the site manager. Um, authorised examiner, designated manager, should just keep that locked away somewhere. When you've got your own card tomorrow and you come in, you'll need to return that card. And when, once you've done that, when you start to use your own card, you must synchronise it when you start. If people forget how this works, it's all in the VTS device user guide. So you go to the F5, takes you across to that page, and there you've got all the reference material lined up. If you want to look in the VTS device user guide, Anything to do with spare smart for smart cards is section 10K. So we scroll down the menu, go to the next page, and there I can look at issue spare smart card. So all I've got to do, click on there, and all the information that, that talks is you needed. Through everything and we've this just is done. one of the useful bits in the user guide. The path that you need to follow is listed, usually on the first page. Now, earlier we talked about emergency testing, fallback testing, and standalone testing, and you said you'd explain how to verify the fallback test results. Just uh, first of all, explain what that means. Well remembered. Um, if you've tested in fallback, then you'll need to verify the test results um, that the service desk entered on your behalf. So, is that to check that they're all correct? Spot on, dead right. Okay, so how's that done? You'll need to have the results of each fallback test as well as the test number. And those are the results that you would have recorded on the VT40 form? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Right here. And what if you have forgotten or not done that for whatever reason? Well, you can request an overnight report on the MOT comp system, um, a test log, which will have the details. But you really should use the VT40 because it's a requirement that handwritten VT40 is a retained by the station for three months. OK, so we've got a VT40 here. Should yep. we verify the details on this form? Yep, I'll take you through it if you want to um, pick through the menu. So Great. what we're going to do 
verify the results. It's not on that first menu, so it's so got to be another function. Other functions. So, so we've got to, to come down to number seven, other functions. Either click on that, or of course you can or use the keyboard. Of course you can use the keyboard. I'm going to click. That's it. If we look on this screen, we've got an option at number four that says fallback sat and emergency testing. And we want to verify a fallback test. That's it. So, so we just click on that one. That will take four, us click. to another menu. And we wish to verify a fallback test result. So that's nice and clearly marked at number one. That's it. Click. So now you can see there that it wants you to input a test number. There's and a test, test number, number on the top there. Two, one, zero, four, four. Zero, nine, zero. That's it. Now we just go for test results. You can use the mouse or the keyboard again, as indicated. That's it, and it brings up the test details. You can see all the details are there. Just keep scrolling down. So we can compare... It, it, yeah, we're know, just making sure one, that this is the correct margin. vehicle we've right. got there. This is definitely it. What we need to do, because uh, I know this vehicle failed, so we need to check the apply reasons for rejection button. So I'm going to click on so click apply on that. reason for rejection. That's it. Now we'll just check that all the failure items are correct and we're happy with that. OK, so this screen has right. got a list of all the details and the reasons for rejection. Yeah. Just talk us through that. Well, that's the screen that's all the failure items. I'll just make sure they've been recorded correctly. So and you're uh, comparing and contrasting all the yeah. time your, your VT40 form with the results in the VT yeah. estimate. Um, what I'm looking at is to make sure that the fact that we've dealt across the telephone, dealt across the telephone, that we haven't had any mismatch of information, misunderstanding. So that they've recorded everything yeah. that you've so told everything's them. Everything's recorded correctly. As you come down the screen on the left hand side, you can see there's a menu of all the different manual areas. Mm -hmm. I need to just make sure that the brake test result has been entered correctly. So that's just telling us what the vehicle was, what type of braking system it had. Um, what type of brake test we did, which was a roller brake test, all roller brake test. So I'll just continue from that screen. And now I've got the figures, so all I'll do is I'll turn over the VT40 and I'll just check these figures against what's there. And that all matches up, that matches up. Um, I notice there's a slight mistake at near side axle one on the parking brake. Near side axle one has got the number 220 in the box. Right. It's been recorded as 220, but it's actually 225. So what do we do now? So I can make a minor adjustment to that. So if you change that to 225... Just um, while we're doing that, just sort of um, clarify what minor is. Yeah, I can change minor details to the information that have gone across there, like brake test results. Um, maybe there's a number wrong on a back to front on a VIN number. What I can never do is change the test result. When you say the test result, that's pass or yeah, failure? Yeah, pass or fail, that stands. I can't change that. So, we've made our minor we've, alterations. We've made our minor alterations. Happy All the other figures else. are correct, so I'll just go for continue, which is the bottom left. OK. That now comes up and shows me what the figures were. If I'm OK with that, I will confirm the brake result at the bottom. Confirm brake result. Brake result, that's it. It's come up there. Um, it's just put in front of me the failure items and... Uh, the service brake performance report. If I scroll down, I can just view a summary of the results. Oh, so you click on that or you hit click F2. on that one or hit F2. There's the items it failed on. That's all okay. I'll verify it. I'll hit continue. I come to the final screen. It's telling me the result was a fail. There's a drop down box there, and what I need to select is I accept or have changed the pre-populated data, which is what we've done. So you're just confirming that you've made yeah, that minor alteration? Yeah, I accept what's on there. We can just accept results now. OK. That's it. It's so done. that is a full-back test Yeah, that's been verified. verified. So, Brian, we're nearing the end. Mm. Have you got any final tips to offer us? Yeah, we've noticed that uh, quite a few testers are not acknowledging QC checks to the system. So what should they be doing that they're not doing at the moment? What they should do is just log on to the system and then no QC checks shown on the front screen. So as we've got used to, it's obviously another function, isn't it? So number seven. So come down to number seven. So I'll just click on quality control. And the tester should only have one option to choose on the screen. So all he would need to do is just select that. Then up in front of him will come the comments put on there by the QC. And right. then he just needs to check that and then acknowledge that he's actually seen it. 
So that does all seem quite straightforward, and I can see now that it must be quite a help. Yeah, well, we've tried to keep it simple so that testers can then concentrate on testing vehicles correctly and they can get the device as a helping hand. Well, Brian, thanks very much indeed for being our guide. Thank you.